Hello and welcome to Emergency Insights. I'm your host, James Carter. Let's explore an important topic for every healthcare provider, drugs that can lead to hyperkalemia. First on our list are potassium-sparing diuretics. These are often used to treat hypertension and heart failure, but as their name implies, they can retain potassium. We're talking about drugs like spironolactone, aplerinone, amylaride, and triamterene. Their mechanism is to block sodium reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct, which in turn reduces potassium excretion. Next, we have a very common class of cardiovascular drugs, ACE inhibitors, or ACEIs. Medications such as lisinopril, analopril, remipopril, and captopril are mainstays for managing hypertension and heart failure. However, by inhibiting the conversion of angiotensin I to angiotensin II, they decrease aldosterone secretion, and as you know, aldosterone promotes potassium excretion. This decrease can lead to potassium retention. Similarly, angiotensin II receptor blockers, or ARBs, have a similar effect. Drugs like losartan, valsartan, and omsartan block the effects of angiotensin II, leading to the same reduction in aldosterone and potential for hyperkalidia. Direct renin inhibitors, like aliskirin, also play a role. By inhibiting renin, they prevent the entire cascade of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, leading to a decrease in aldosterone and an increase in serum potassium. We then turn our attention to a very common class of medications, NSAIDs, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This includes ibuprofen, naproxen, and indomethacin. NSAIDs can cause hyperkalemia by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis, which is essential for normal renal blood flow and renin release. This can lead to decreased aldosterone levels and reduced potassium excretion. Beta blockers, particularly the non-selective ones like propranolol, can also contribute to hyperkalemia. They block beta-2 receptors, which are involved in the cellular uptake of potassium, especially during times of stress. By blocking these receptors, they can prevent potassium from moving into cells, leading to higher serum levels. Another important class to be aware of are calcineurin inhibitors, which are immunosuppressants like cyclosporin and tacrolimus. Their mechanism isn't fully understood, but it's believed they can cause renal vasoconstriction and interfere with potassium handling in the renal tubules. Succinylcholine is a drug we use frequently in emergency and critical care settings for rapid sequence intubation. It can cause a massive release of potassium from cells, particularly in patients with pre-existing conditions like burns, trauma, or neuromuscular disorders. This is a critical consideration during intubation, and its use should be carefully weighed in susceptible patients. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to our next discussion on Emergency Insights.